Hello and welcome to video three in my three-part series. Um, let's talk about shipbuilding. The, the heavier your ship is, the more engines you're going to need to carry that weight. Um, the lighter this thing is and the less landing gear you have to put on it, and the less engines you have to put on it, the more points you can take from your reactor and put onto your guns and your shields. But I got a huge shield, I've got 14 guns, yes, 14, because these Vanguard Obliterator Auto Projectors, which are only Class A, but um, you can have six of them because their max power is two. So I got six damn bad boys, um, four of these guys, and four of these guys. And that allows me to fairly quickly melt other ships. And if you try to keep minimalist like I did here, um, you can do pretty well. Also, these engines are also A-class. So it's not like you have to wait a long time to get these engines. I was thinking about upgrading, but right now it really doesn't matter. I don't, I don't there's no reason for me to upgrade. Um, unless I can get lighter and uh, put a couple more points of power into my um, guns, that would be cool. Let's talk about followers. Followers have a lot to say. They'll tell you all kinds of stories and ask you all kinds of questions, and for me, it doesn't add anything to the game. So, I've chosen a life of not using followers. I have brought Andresia here to use for an example. Um, when you're looting and you get over-encumbered, um, let's say, you know, picking up weapons and armor and stuff off of uh, your enemies. Um, some people will drop those items. <sighs> More time wasted. She, she, what, is she going to give me a muffin? Thanks for thinking of me. All right, what do we, what do we get? What do we get? Okay, 450 credits. Um, that's not, you know, that's not irrelevant. That's nice. Um... So I'll normally put <laughs> my loot on my ship as soon as I get here instead of dealing with the follower. It's just one less step. Um, if I have to look through her whole inventory and try to figure out what's <laughs> figure out what's hers or mine, it is just so aggravating to me. Um cool things you can do if you do want to use followers. Um, you can equip them with the weapons that you choose for them. And you can obviously um, dress them like dolls however you want to. Um, I know she looks absolutely ridiculous right now, but um, you can make her look, you know, you can dress them up however you want to. Um, they have just as many clothing options as you do. And then when you get out to space, they're going to be in a spacesuit. You can change that too. Um, I know I generally just try to make... Well, honestly, I don't even use followers. Um, I only brought her onto my ship just to show you, for example. One of the big reasons why I don't use followers is because of this perk. Isolation. Do 40%. So this is at level 4. Do 40% weapon damage and... 60 damage resistance for each space suit and helmet equipped when you don't have a companion or crew. Now I'm rereading this and going, oh wait, is it 80% weapon damage? Because it says and for each space suit and helmet, and that's two things, space suit and helmet. Anyway, I don't know, whatever it is, it seems to do just <laughs> absolute ton more damage and Either one of those, even if it's 40% more damage, is worth more than having one of them help me in combat. Especially because they, um, your followers, will soak up XP. So instead of you leveling up quicker, you're going to level up slower. There's nothing wrong with that if you're, a lo if you're new to these games entirely or new to first-person shooters and you don't... Um, you know, have the skills to go out there and do it on your own. It, it's a really good tool to have a follower, but 
it's kind of one of those things where as soon as you can break yourself off of that habit, it's going to be better for you. Caveat, um, if you run into a space battle that is super difficult and you just can't get past it, um, you know, obviously either turn down the difficulty or go grab some followers that, that, um, are going to have abilities that are going to add to your ship systems. Make sure that your ship can support, um, a few crew. Like this one says two crew. So like if I was going to go set myself up for that, I would go get like, uh, I don't remember what it's called. I think it's called a crew station. It adds like four more stations um, for crew on your ships that they can help um, repair systems and stuff. Um, I always take this perk uh, at the very beginning of the game called Taskmaster. Occasionally, if you have crew trained in a certain ship system, that system will automatically repair itself to full health whenever it's damaged below 50%. However, all crew costs twice as much to hire. So, I real I don't, I mean, I just ran through a playthrough, uh, well, started, started a playthrough where I'm not uh, using that skill. I'm just using everything that's boosting my oxygen and stamina and health. Um, but, generally speaking, kind of backup plan, um, <clears throat> I like to use that Taskmaster skill. Um, I've I've run into two instances where the space battles are super, super hard. Um, maybe in my first hundred hours or something, um, I did the Crimson Fleet um, big mission, um, and there's a space battle toward the end of that, that is ridiculously hard when you're first starting the game anyway, or at least it was for me when I, uh, when I had zero understanding of how to build a ship and I just had the crummiest ship. I think it was pretty, pretty darn crummy. Um, that was all super hard for me. So now I can run through those kinds of battles and not have any issue, but if I was going to do it again, and if I was newer to the game, um, Taskmaster is a really good trait to take, and it'll make that a lot easier for you. Um, I want to talk about power leveling, which I know I've talked about a ton, but um, you can either power level or you can go do bounties. Here in Numeria, the, the enemies are plentiful, and... Um, and there are no ground enemies, there are no super dangerous enemies, like, at least from, like, level 10 or 20 or something like that, you could be, you could be running here if you have a good rifle, like, even a base Beowulf, um, I did a video on that recently, <clears throat> um, but at, like, level 10, when I first came in here, uh, these whale sharks were swarming me and almost killed me, I was one hit like, within seconds of landing on the planet. I mean, now I'm almost level 80 or whatever, 76 or something. So, like, I have no fear of any of these things at all. Um, but, like, you can just see, just, I'm not going to even do a whole level here or anything, but I just wanted to show you, uh, this is really great. But, other thing to do is, if let's say you're lower on money, you don't necessarily need to do power level in, um, unless you're trying to level something up and get one of your stats higher or something, especially if you're trying to build up any of the gun stats, uh, then, yeah, you do want to do power leveling. But if you can't afford the ammo and the time, go get some bounty missions. These are bounty missions, and these are bounty missions. Um, these ones that say destroy the Clemson, Crimson Fleet Wraith uh, are referring to space battles where you're going to attack them in the space and go ship to ship. The ones that say things like kill the ecliptic command, commandant, command, command, commandant? Okay, commandant. I didn't know that was a word. Or kill the spacer punk on Mimas. Kill the means you're going to go kill or assassinate this 
person, which means you're going to go into like a base and deal with a bunch of enemies, which you're going to take all their loot. It's not about the bounty. Like the bounties are like 3,000 credits on either one of these, and that's why the space ones kind of suck. And they're cool because you can do them quickly. Maybe that's even better, but only if you're good at, really good at ship combat. Then you could really uh, clean up doing that. But, um, yeah, just a balance between um, either doing those or doing this kind of thing. And, <laughs> and, uh, and either making money um, while you're leveling up um, and maybe upgrading your gear, too, by doing that or by doing power leveling on a planet like this. So, anyway, um, you can see how effective I am with... Um, this bale ah, with this Beowulf rifle, it just melts stuff. It's super easy to use. But I also have this rifle. Um, it does literally oh more than double. It depends because sometimes it's showing the damage with my perk, um, the isolationist perk, and then other times it's not. So I, I can never tell what's going on here. Um, I think this actually does like 800 damage if I go into the menu here, but not at the moment. So anyway, <laughs> this one does over double, maybe 150% or 250% or something, I don't know. Um, but it does um, half the fire rate, so this isn't like the most economical in any sense of the way for um, kill time to kill or damage per second. Um, this is just purely damage per bullet. It's only got a mag of 5. The ammunition is considerably more expensive. Um, it's the caseless um, 50 cal. Yeah, value on that single bullet is 38 credits. Value on the 7.7 .7 single bullet is 9. So, it's a lot, it's a lot more. It's like four times more. Um, but I enjoy using it, and um, part of the issue, too, is just uh, buying bullets in general. Um, Sometimes I'm like low on bullets because, uh, or low on ammunition because it's hard to get a really good chunk of ammunition. Like sometimes I can buy 400 at a time of the 7.7s, um, but sometimes I forget or whatever. Whatever the deal is, it's nice to have a second type of ammo, so I can just always remember to pick up the 50 caseless uh, as well and. <clears throat> Here's why I like using it. It's just, it's better for if I'm doing a distant shot like that, and I need the accuracy, and I need that one bullet to count. You know, now I'm not trying to take two or three shots at this thing that's super far away and hard to hit. Um, so there are times when, as far as we're talking about like economy of time, this and time management, this is a good rifle to use. Um, yeah, that's about it. Well, you guys have a good one. I'll uh, see you in the next video. Take care.